Alright guys, just in case I forget later, let me go ahead and give you guys, this is the practice test. So tomorrow I'll have the answer key, and then Wednesday we'll have the actual test. Nice. I figured I didn't say enough about that game, so I want to say a little bit more. Um, so it should be like negative um, carrier and, and uh, kind of love. That's what it should be. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, if they would have been in there, then it would have gone seven. The Warriors would have taken the four. Seven games to be in. Um, yeah, mathematics. <laughs> All right, so let's see where we leave off. We're about to get into section 12.5. We're going to get 12.5, 12.6 done today. And then we'll do 12.7, first thing tomorrow for the review. Um, so here's the basic idea with, with 12.5. We've already sort of done some of what we need to do for this. Well, let me let me show you how this comes in handy. So you, you know how to do square root of 98. That's one of the first things we did today. Simplify. So we're going to finally see another reason why you might want to do that kind of thing. So just to get us in that direction, what do you, what's your gut tell you this probably is? Seven. Yeah. Because what is square root of 5? I don't know. Shit. So it's a lot. It acts just like x would. Because what's x? I don't know. So I got two of these things that I don't know plus seven more things that I don't know makes. I'm sorry. I think we'll be thinking ahead. Two of these plus five of these makes seven. They work the same way. You guys kind of with me here so far. So that's not that bad. So that that wouldn't work if this square root of five would be because it would be like x and y. So if I said 2x plus 5y, you'd say, I'm done. I'm just done before you get it to me. Because right? you can't do any of that. Right? So they have to be like terms. So to be like terms, same number, same root. <laughs> so if I ask you what's 2 cube root of 5 plus 5 square root of 5, you can't do it. You're done. Already simplified. Right? Already done. All right, so... You might be able to imagine what's going to happen then, maybe. We'll have a problem like this. Uh, <coughs> now, this is where I get people telling me the answer is 5 square root of 39, which is neat. You guys can see where that came from, right? Yes, I I love it. That's sort of like when I get when I ask people what's two x plus three y, and I get somebody tell me that's five x y. Like, Holy crap! You're completely ignoring. You made multiplication out of addition. You did a lot of neat, like 
Harry Potter level the shit there. Right? <laughs> yeah, if you simplify, you might be able to write them in like terms. So here I can't do a damn thing, because what can I do with x and y? Uh, but what can I do with square root of 12? Yeah. Square root of 4, square root of 3. What can I do with square root of 27? Square root of 9, square root of 3. See how they're both going to end up with 3? So what's square root of 4? Times 2. Remember that? We've seen that before. If there's a number outside already, it's going to multiply by whatever you're able to do, because that's the operation. 2 times this. What do you got over there? So 3 times 3? Crazy. So then I end up with? 13. 13, right? 4 of those plus 9 of those is 13 of those. Yes, good. Yeah, cool. Because there's a 3 out there already. So this is really the step I'm sort of skipping here is I got 3 times 3 times square root of 3. Well, that's 9 square root of 3. 2 times 2 times square root of 4 square root of 3. Cool. I like it. I like it. Not too bad, right? If you're able to do this, you're able to do that problem. <laughs> it's too easy for her. She's like, Come on, math man. <laughs> Give me our, our. Um, so what about, I mean, the only thing you can really do to make this more interesting is, is uh, do stuff like, oh, what you got, Jeff? I don't know, Jeff. Uh, let's see. You can do it. Yeah, this is exactly the same idea. The process doesn't care what's in there. Well, here, start with the easier one. What can you do the cube root of that's in there? Four. I can't do the cube root of four. No. Yeah, I can do the cube root of eight. Is that cool? Just rewrite cube root of 16 as cube root of eight times cube root of two. So what are you going to look for as a factor of this? What's going to be left over here is the 2. You guys see what I mean? So what you want to break this up as 2 times? So see, I can get a hint. I can get a hint from the problem. I do the easier one first and say, oh, a factor of 2. Let me try to factor a 2 out of that, because that would make it like terms. Maybe it won't work, but most of them should work. The book is going to make most of them actually something like terms. You with me? But in the real world, there's no guarantee that there's going to be any like terms between the two. But here, I'm going to look for, okay, I can break this up as 64 times cube root of 2. What's cube root of 64? 4. 4. Cube root of 2, I don't know. Cube root of 8? 2. Times 4? Is 8. You guys all with me here? Be honest. No. So what's up? So let, me, let me do the steps I'm skipping. Well, I'm not really skipping this step here. Cube root of 64 is 4. Cube root of 8 is 2. And then what's 4 times 2? 8. Right? And then 4 of these minus 8 of these is? Negative 4 of these. So yeah, you could do cube root of 8 times 16. So you get 2 cube root of 16, but then that's you can break that down even further. So I, I like it, because then it makes it like terms with this, but then each of those you can break down even further. So when you're simplifying radicals, you have to simplify as far as you can. All right, so what about here? You guys try this one. What's that? Is that a cube of 5 cube? 
All right, so five. Yeah. Uh, shit, now what was the thing? So you see the difference between that, and if I meant the fifth root of 63, it would be that, right? Okay. And again, thankfully, I don't handwrite the tests. So they're all square roots up there. You get a problem like this, I highly recommend you do the easiest one. You do whichever one you can see, right? So even if it's, uh, okay, uh, 63. Right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, so now you've got a hint as to what's what would be left here inside. Yeah. So now you can just try to do 7 and everything else. So this is going to be 4 times 7, and this will be 100 times 7. So you're not guaranteed in general that that's going to work, but that's what you try. And if it doesn't work on part of it, maybe that part's not going to be like terms. Who big deal? You just won't add it together. Then. But yeah, it works. So this will be 5 times 3 rad 7 uh, minus 2 times 2 rad 7 plus 3 times 10 rad 7. 15 rad 7. Minus 4 RAS 7 plus 3 RAS 7 41 RAS 7. So again, you can look at RAD 7 as X. It works the same way because I don't know what RAD 7 is and I don't know what X is. So actually, mathematically, they kind of work the same way. The big advantage it has is if they're not like terms, I have things I can try to see if I can leave something that is like terms. That's more than I could do with x and y. I can't do shit with that. So we could get a term and an answer, so only two, two, Yeah, sure, of course. I mean, all I have to do here is make that 600. And that would have been squared to six times that. That would have been squared to six. I would not have been able to combine that with those, so I just wouldn't have. It would have been uh, 11 rad 7 plus 30 rad 6. I would have stopped there because that's as far as the like terms goes. Right? So if I simplify my radicals and I get here, let's say, just put a number. There it is. Farther than go. Because are those like terms? Hell no. 17 of these minus 2 of those. I don't know. Well, what did you get 72? I don't know. 7, seven of these yeah. plus 10 of the same thing? Like yeah, so it's just like 7x minus 2y plus 10. So it's exactly the same. What would the answer here be? 17 of these minus 2 of those. 17 of these minus 2 of those. You put your like terms together and you leave the parts that aren't like off by themselves, right? It sounds horrible. It sounds like a terrible way to treat people, but this is just numbers. They're fine. They can handle it. 
All right. Maybe, maybe let that part be nice. Because I, I think most of us are able to handle this process here, right? Mm -hmm. That process should be relatively in the bag for most of us. And this is just doing that several times. Okay, cool. So, we're getting a little closer to the uglier rationalization I promised earlier. You know, like, you don't have to hold that promise. Too bad. I will. Um, so, what about this? What do you guys, what do you guys think about this here? This is still 12.5. This is still 12.5, yeah, that's GM package stuff. Yeah, do you, get, yeah. Do you see how I've got ugly kind of like uh, numbers, radicals and shit, but what's the property behind this? It's just distributive property, right? So the properties never care what's in them. I get an A in front of B minus C, and I would just make it A, B minus A, C. I don't even think about it. I just, I just multiply the thing through, right? So, but now you got to be a little careful when you start to multiply it through. What is 4 rad 2 times 3 rad 5? You're multiplying, right? So 4 times 3? 12. Rad 2, rad 5? Rad 10. And just to make sure you understand why that's true. I mean, I definitely can't multiply that 4 by that 5, right? Why not? Because it's not, it's not inside of a square root. So tell me real quick, what's 4x times 3x squared? Well, you would multiply the numbers, and then you multiply the variables, right? So that's sort of what I'm doing here. I multiply the numbers, and I multiply the things that are acting like variables. I don't know what the hell square root of 2 is and square root of 5. But I can multiply those things together and make square root of 10. Because they're both roots. I love it. Both square roots. So then, and then keep going. Minus 20. Which is? 2. two. See, now this is what I mean. Rad 2 times rad 2 is 2. You could write rad 4, but then the next step you got to make it 2, and then you got one more step, but we should. So what is, can I do anything with this? I, I, I never quite understand why somebody's able to do this kind of stuff, but then here, I get people that do this. <laughs> How did the five do that? How did the five do that? How many fives are there? One. I knew that from the beginning there was one five. So how the hell can it come out when a radical needs two and a square root needs two? So I, can I do anything with this? No. Not a damn thing. We'll leave it alone. Did that, of course, is just done. Now, then I have people that tell me this. Where'd that come from? 12 minus 40 is negative 28, but why am I not allowed to do that? These are not, you can do it, these are not like terms. It's like 12x minus 40. Can you do anything with that? No. Good. So this is a, a, kind of a big part of math is just cleaning things up. It's just knowing order operations comes in a little bit, properties come in a little bit, what's like terms comes in. It's just cleaning it up, making that look better, just consolidating. That's as much as I can consolidate things. All right, cool. So of course then, what would you do with, with this? I'll tell you what you do with that, Jeff. All right, let's go. Uh, uh, part of my part of me just loves the person that says that's nine times seven plus four. Are you allowed to distribute the square? No. Hell no. What's what's squaring based on? What operation are exponents based on? So they will not play well with subtraction. And what do you actually have to do here officially? Do the same. Good. Write the thing twice. That's what squared means. Because you'll lose the middle term if you're not careful, right? So this is going to be 3 rad 7 minus 2 times another 3 rad 7 minus 2. Now here's where I start getting people that do this. I'm like, what the heck? Where'd that come from? I have two of these. Who's this guy? What happened to the other guy? Wait a minute. I've got to have two of the same thing, right? 
Don't make it become squares all of a sudden. It's not. It is the square of something, not the difference of squares. Cool, I like it. So then what do you get here? Nine, four, nine. Yeah, so nine times seven. Right? Six. Six rad seven and then another six rad seven and then plus four. Plus four. Alright, let me stop there for a second. Because foiling or distribution does not care what's in it. It just says multiply this guy by this guy and then this guy and then this guy gets a turn. It's like, alright. It doesn't care what's what's there. So first, outer, inner, last, or just distribute whatever way you want to look at it, and then I combine my like terms. So 9 times 7 is cool. And in the middle I get good, minus 12 of these, plus 4, and, I, and then I get 67, minus 12 right 7. So we have two things. We have how do you multiply radicals and, and numbers? Well, now we know we multiply the numbers together and the radicals together. And we combine that with distribution and foiling and all that kind of stuff, which never changes. The minute you know how to distribute something, it's always the same. Yes? Where did the 9 times 7 come from again? Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. Rad 7 times rad 7 is? Seven, right? So the step I'm sort of skipping is three times three is nine, seven times seven is forty-nine. But what's the square root of forty-nine? Seven. So, so I'm really trying to force you guys to realize that's an extra step you don't need. If you need, if you want to put it down there, go ahead. But square root of seven times square root of seven is seven. This here. Something interesting comes out of this here. Somebody leaves, I'm always like, what did I just say? Did I just say something offensive? I do say offensive things sometimes. I don't think I say anything. But can this be like a difference of squares? Yeah, it totally is. Right? And you don't even have to know that going in. You'll just see that the middle terms are going to yeah. cancel. But it's good to know ahead of time. Same things, different sign, the middle term. So in the first term, I get 25 times. Plus 5 rad 77 minus 5 rad 77, right? So the, that just goes away. Is that cool? And at the end I get minus 7. 7. So what's 25 times 11? 275. 275 minus 7? 268. Yes. So look at this. How, how irrational is that? Very, right? Square root of 11? What? And if I multiply it by its, I'll give an official word here in a minute, but it's difference of squares, buddy. Does that make sense? The difference of squares pair, right? We call this, this guy's conjugate. Not conjugal, right? One of them's not in prison or something. It's conjugate. Sort of sounds like conjugate your verbs. It's like French. Je suis. Yes. Uh, what's square root of 7 times square root of 7? Yeah, and it's plus times negative is minus. The middle terms, I didn't have to write them because it was 5 of these, negative 5 plus 5 of these, they cancel, right? Is that cool? Okay, maybe, maybe. So what's interesting is I took a very irrational number times a certain very irrational number, it's conjugate. Conjugate just means same terms. Different sign. 
And then it came out, how? What's this number? <coughs> rational, it came out rational. Interesting, where is another place where I wanted to know how to make something rational is when they ask me to rationalize the denominator, for example, right? Watch this. So if I said, exactly. So if the, if, uh, if the problem I'm looking at, if it said rationalize the denominator, okay, so anyway, uh, and I got 1 over square root of 5 square root of 11 plus square root of 7. I want you to realize, if I multiply, if I say, oh, I need one more 11, and I multiply by rad 11, this guy's going to still be radical, right? It's going to be rad 77. If I multiply by rad 7, this guy's going to, so I need some combination of the two. And like we just figured out, what's going to make it come out rational is multiplied by its conjugate. So if I multiply top and bottom of this by 5 rad 11 minus rad 7, So on the bottom I get 268. Right, we already did the work. And on the top I get that. So that has been rationalized. Uh, the denominator has been rationalized because there's no longer any radicals on the bottom, right? So if I have more than one term, if it was, if it was just that on the bottom, what would you multiply by? If I just had this. I just multiply by rad 11, right? So if I have one term, you just multiply that one term by what it's missing. If I have more than one term, I have to multiply by its conjugate. Yes, sir? So then the bottom would become 5 times 11? Yeah, yeah, exactly. For this example, it would be rad 11 over 55. I like it. You don't have to multiply by 5 rad 11. Do I need another 5 for some reason? The 5 is fine. I just need the 11 part to become something nice. But now I've got two terms, I need the guy's conjugate. All right, so you guys do this one. It's the same instructions, rational line of the denominator. Make sure he's on the right track. What do I multiply top and bottom? Yeah, by three, 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 two, three, minus, minus red. Yeah, just take its conjugate, which means the difference of squares pair. Right. So conjugate just means same terms, change the middle sign. That's all it means. Don't change both signs. That sucks. 
And again, just to kind of show you a different way to look at this, the only place that a radical could still exist would be in the middle term. Why is that? Because rad 2 times rad 2 is 2, rad 5 times rad 5 is 5. Those aren't radicals anymore. The only place it could be is in the middle term. So by making it the conjugate, by making it its different squares pair, the middle terms cancel. The only place there could have been a radical left is gone. So on the top, what do I get? 15 rad 2. 5 rad 5. Minus 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Minus 3. Do that on the next step here. So we cool that just foiling the top out, right? And on the bottom, I'm going to get, yeah, because I get, uh, what do I get? Nine times two. Yeah, so be careful. So I get nine times two minus five. Are you guys cool with that? Okay. So on the top, I can't do shit with that. I can't do shit with that. But. That would be 4 times 5, right? Mm -hmm. Square root of 4 is? Two. Times 3 is? 6. six. Are you guys, do you guys, is it okay for me to do that? I don't want to write a lot. Yeah. You probably don't want me to write too much either. And uh, this is easy. We've done this a few times. 25 and 2. Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 2 is, I don't know. And look at that. And look at there. <laughs> Sorry. So you get 18 minus 5 on the bottom right. God, I like this problem. I didn't even force it to be this way. This is cool. So then I get 15 rad 2 plus 5 rad 2 is 20 rad 2. Negative 5 rad 5 minus 6 rad 5 is 11 rad 5. All over 13. So it's just realizing that you have to use what's called the conjugate. And then once you write that down, it's just Foil it. Foil, 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 foil. Maybe. Maybe. Where am I looking? Oh, here. So minus 5 rad 5, minus 6 rad 5. Yeah. Just put like terms together. Normally, there won't be that many like terms, but this problem, I like it. 10 had 2 and 5 in it, so there ended up being all these like terms. It's kind of nice. Okay. God, I can't read you guys at all. God, it's like this. When did you start the file? When did I start? Right. Once I wrote that down, the conjugate, I just started 5 times that, bam, 5 times that, bam. Oh, yeah. And I foiled right off from the beginning. Yeah. Once I write the conjugate down, I just start foiling. Yeah. Notice that the bottom doesn't just go away. For some reason, after I teach this, I have people do it, and then the bottom just kind of goes away. <laughs> be careful. It doesn't always become one. Here it was 13. It's got to still be there. So I think that's the ultimate level of ugliness for section 12.5. And real quick, just in case, just to make sure you guys understand, it doesn't matter which kind of root I use. Oh, let's see. Sure. Oh, I see. My root here got a little... All right, so here's cube roots, but the process, of course, doesn't change. What do you get? Cube root of 8 minus 2. Cube root of 8 is 2. Cube root of 64 is 4. 2 minus 8 is 6. Cool. This kind of brings up something. I'm getting too many people on the homework. This happened a couple times. 
uh, I'm getting too many people. There are problems like this. 3 minus 5 times x plus 2 or something. Blah, blah, blah. I'm getting way too many people telling me that it's negative 2 times x plus 2. Why is that so desperately not true? Yeah, you have to multiply first. I wouldn't even distribute the 5. This is like part of a, a, a problem you have to solve, right? You with me? I'm going to make it a little bit nicer. I, I, I don't care what is happening. I would have to multiply before I subtract it anyway. So I definitely can't do that. And then I don't even want to do that. So why would I even think that way? I'm, I'm going to subtract the 3, divide by negative 5, get the absolute value by itself. So all of a sudden, I'm getting too many people that don't realize this is still order operations holds. You can't combine those because five is involved in a multiplication problem. You can't just combine those. Yeah. So how did you get 64? Here. Yes. So everything's a cube root, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm allowed the cube root of two can go in and make eight. Cube root of two. What's two times thirty-two? Cool. So I just distribute the cube root of two to both. All right. They're not going to give you one where it's a cube root there and a square root there. That's a little bit evil. But if they did, you couldn't put them together, of course. They're not the same root. Okay. Cool. Maybe. Oh, and then the last little thing here. Um, I kind of skipped this kind of problem. Let me see. If, if, same thing as always, but let me see if you guys realize what's going on here. Yeah, you do the same thing you always do. Is there a square that is a factor of something? Yes. Right? So I can factor this as 4 times. Right? Take a 4 out. And thankfully, that part that's going to be left is going to be like turn. So I get 2 of these plus 1 of these makes 3 of these. Cool. So how do you do it? How do you take a square and do the square root of it? That's, that's how you always do it. All right, okay. And I don't think I've really harped on this much yet, and I have to. Uh, I might have said something about this before, but I can never say this enough. Um, so a lot like that, but if I had squared a nine, a squared minus nine, this is so desperately not equal to 3a minus 3 or something. So desperately not. There's no a up there. Do you see the mistake? Do you see why somebody would believe that? And I'm sure a couple of you guys might be right now going, I currently believe that, Jeff. So what the hell? <laughs> if you're allowed to do this, you, you're basically saying the square root can distribute to both of those. But what do we know what square root is? To the? Square root is the same thing as that thing to the? And I know that a power can't distribute across a minus sign. We've done that. A minus B squared is not A squared minus B squared or something. No, you have to write it twice and do all that shit, right? You have to kind of find a way around order operations. You write it twice and kind of sneak it in there. Right? All that whole process is finding a way. I cannot distribute that across both. And if I could, I want you to understand this. If I could, uh, then something like the square root of 25 minus 16 would equal 5 minus 4 would be 1. But wait a minute, what's 25 minus 16? Nine. So the square root of 9 equals 1. That could be a problem. So obviously this is not true, right? You guys understand? I can't distribute a square root across a minus because they're not, they don't play well together. Square roots are not based on subtraction, they're based on multiplication. They're not going to distribute. I really want this understood. Whereas, if I had this, uh, you could do it, Jeff. I mean, this is going to seem a little silly, but I don't care. Couldn't I distribute that? That's totally what distribution. Why does it make sense? What's multiplication based on? What does 2 times x really mean? It means x added to its. Oh, it's based on addition. Multiplication is based on addition. That's why this is so damn easy. Because multiplication will play well with addition because it's based on freaking addition, right? Whereas this dude, 
Oh, well, you got to write that bad boy twice and foil it and do all this weird shit just to get around order operations because I cannot distribute a power across addition because powers are not based on addition. Because that's the word I always see when people are like, well, we used to be able to distribute, now I can't. Well, we, this is a power. It's not going to act the same. It's not supposed to act the same. So if you think math changes, come see me immediately because it cannot. I can only have different types of functions. Then they're going to act differently. Yes, sir. So the answer would be 3 square root a minus 1? Well, it, okay, so let's look at this a little bit more. You got to be careful. So I totally agree I can take a 9 out, right? So then that's 3 square root of a square root minus 1. Is that cool? Square root of 9 is there. Square root of that thing is there. The most you could do with this, yeah, I get a minus 1, a plus 1. Can I take the square root of either one of those? I only have one of these. I only have one of those. I can't do shit with that. Do you guys see that? I would need two of one of them to be able to do something with it, right? I've only got one of these, and I've only got one of those. Now, if the problem would have been this, why is that different? What do I get? That's a 3 out there, right? It's not QB. A minus 1 squared. Ah, yeah. Now I can do what? Kill it, because the square root completely kills the square. That's totally good. This one, the square root can't kill something times something else. I can't do anything with that. Mm. All right. So that's section 12.5. So here's the last section of the day. Woohoo, Jeff. All right. So let me see what you guys think about this. Uh, uh, let's see. Recall. How do I solve uh, this here? How do I solve it though? What did you do? Took a square root. Why did I take a square root? Because it's the opposite, the inverse. It's an inverse function. It's the opposite, which is officially called the inverse of squaring. That totally makes sense, right? So if I would have had, so x equals plus or minus 3. So if I would have had uh, a cubed equals 8. Take a cube root. It's crazy because the opposite of cubing is cube root. So solving equations, the idea actually never changes. I just get uglier and uglier equations full of weirder and weirder functions. But what's the idea? Undo what's being done so I can get the letter by itself. What's happening to the letter? Cubing. All right, kill the cube how? Do the opposite cube root. All right, so what's my point? I don't know. I forgot. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what if I had this? Yeah, what's happening to my variable piece? Yeah, yeah, right now it's got a square root, so I'm going to I'm going to square both sides. That's insane. So if I square and of course why am I squaring both sides? Cuz that's going to be what kills the square root. I like it. Now, now sometimes I'll have this problem and I'll have somebody do this. What's wrong with that? Can I break into that square root? No, I can't. So really, now it makes even more sense as to why I'm doing this. I'm doing this so I can actually move the 4 and the x and whatever. It's stuck inside the square root. So I want to square it, so then I'm free to move it. So now once I square this side, x minus 2. What sucks is when somehow the square is left alive and somebody makes a much harder problem. The square is dead, right? It died. It gave its life to kill the radical, right? He's in prison. He hits his head on the wall and dies. And there you go. And he's free. So I get x minus 2 equals 16. So x equals 18. Does that work? Yep. 18 minus 2 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. Hey, it works. Kick ass. 
So you must check your answers here. Why? Why the hell, Jeff? Because this. Let's say I have a square root of 2x minus 1 equals negative 4. What do I do to both sides? Square it. So you get 2x minus 1 equals 16. Add 1. 2x equals 17. Do I have a 2? x is 17 over 2. Circle it. Give it to me and then lose points. Yeah, some of you guys realize I tried desperately to kind of speed up past this. But from the beginning, I knew it was bogus. Because what, what did the equation say from the very beginning? Square root of something was negative. So off the bat, I knew it was bogus. You'll not always know it's bogus. I'll show you an example of that here in a minute. But I worked it, and I got an answer. But when you plug it back in, what happens? I get square root of twice 17 over 2. Minus 1, that's the square root of 17 minus 1. Square root of 16 is 4, not negative 4. So it didn't work. Now, of course, hopefully you guys, just like the absolute value one, don't even do any work. If I say square root equals negative, no answer. Just stop right there. No solution. All right, so here's one that's a little more evil. And real quick, I always I want to say this. Again, I'm going to repeatedly say this. This is not math's fault. Right? Some of you guys should be upset. I did all this work, and math gave me a number that didn't work. Your math is broken. Stop trying to shove it down my throat. Wait, wait, wait. I started with a bogus equation. Right? When I square both sides, I don't... I, what did I square to get 16? Yeah, it could have been 4 or negative 4. The minute I square it, I've lost information about if it was negative or positive. And then math gives me an answer to this, which is not really the same as what it was. So when we do stuff, we realize, remember when math gave me answers before was when I had 3 over x minus 2, and then I get x equals 2? It's because at some point we multiplied by x minus 2 to kill this, right? Do you remember this? So this was a bogus answer can't because it makes it undefined. But why did math give me that answer? Because we had a bogus equation. We multiplied both sides by zero. We didn't know at the time, so math has just got to kind of give, no. It's the best it could do, right? That's the best math can do. Yes, sir? So if that was a cube root? Like Good, then it would have been fine. Because a cube root can come out negative. negative. Even roots can't handle negatives inside and don't come out negative. Odd roots can handle negatives everywhere. Right. Okay. So here's a more interesting. Oh. So if it was an even root, it would be an absolute value? No. It is an even root. Right? So be careful. Uh, all right. If I say. Mm, what is the square root of x squared? You would say absolute value of x, right? But that's not what's going on here. This is the square on the outside. I'm squaring to kill the square root. It's not the square root of something squared. I don't, I don't know if you guys realize that's the, that's totally different. So the answer is almost is never going to be absolute value of something. Okay. So what? So here we go. What if I had this here? Uh, you can do it, Jeff. What you got? I don't know. Yeah, no. So again, the process doesn't give a shit what's in it. I'm going to square it. Why do I square it? Because I've got a variable that's stuck in the square root. I've got to free it. But now here's where things really, really weird things happen. Either somebody just magically puts a square. No, no, no. No, no, no. If you square one side, you must square the other side. And of course, there's still a chance that that'll become x squared plus 36, which hopefully everybody realizes is wrong. How do you officially have to do that? Yeah, you have to write it twice. So please don't suddenly forget that just because it's in a bigger problem. You still have to treat it the same as always, right? 
Good. So x squared minus 12x. Now, how the hell do I solve this? Right now? Get it equal to zero first. Okay, so what you're starting to realize is every time we learn something new, it's it's could add another level to our equation. So you see, a few sections back, this could have been our starting point, right? Back in section 9 and 6, the very first section we did, there were some problems that looked a lot like this. Because you had to get it equal to zero and then solve. So now we learn some more shit, we learn some more shit, and now we can start here. And you simplify and you simplify, and, and you forget what the hell was before this. You just have faith that you've done it correctly. And you look at where you are currently, you go, there's a square here on my x, I gotta get it equal to zero and factor. That's what's telling you what to do next. You look at where you are with fresh eyes. What am I at now? What do I have to do? Maybe you guys understand what I'm saying. Because you never know what's gonna be first. You simplify, and then you're kind of in an, an entirely different situation. Then you gotta say, okay, how do I do this now? Get equal to zero. How do you factor this? Kick ass. So the answers appear to be four, four and nine. And just like with uh, problems we've had before, like radical, uh, rational problems, where I was like over x minus two, over x, you gotta check the answer. So what happens when you plug a nine in? Does it work? And you gotta go back to the beginning. So if I check x equals nine, is the square root of nine equal to nine minus six? Is that true? Yes. So you always, and this is really important, you must always go to the original Equation. If you plug it into something after you've done something, then it might they might both check. Because you've done something that changed things that allowed more answers to show. You've got to check it in the original equation, right? So here three equals three, check. If I check four, I get square root of four equal to four minus six. Two equals negative two. No. 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 Now, now, real quick, do you guys see why this happened? If x is 4, they gave me that answer. x is 4 is an answer, a possible answer. But if x was 4, what kind of number is this? 4 is negative. Square root equals negative is bogus. But I didn't know until I figured out what x could be. I go, oh shit, that doesn't work because it makes that side negative. I didn't know until math gave me that option. So it's not math being evil. Let me throw some incorrect answers at you. It's, it's, plus, it's math giving us all the options that work for this, but i got to go back and make sure they actually work in the original. Because I did something. I changed things entirely when I squared. If, if x is 4, this is a negative. If I square it, it becomes positive. That's why it, math says it's an allowable answer for this, but not the original. Uh, I'm saying too much. you got to check your answers. Too long, didn't listen. Check your answers to radical equations. So what about this here? Well, let's see. I don't know. Well, let's see what happens. 